Hi, and uh, welcome to the second video on neural networks. So in this video, uh, we're gonna take a closer look at what neural networks actually are, try to look at the definition of the basic pieces that make up a neural network. In particular, we're gonna focus on the most basic type of neural network known as a feed-forward neural network. So first of all, right, this is just a slide that was also in the, in the previous video. Uh, the neural nets really form what we call the basics of, of deep learning. Uh, and they're typically visualized like this, right? There's some input layer, there's an output layer, and then we have these hidden layers where there's these so-called neurons with edges uh, going between all the neurons, right? So we'll try to, to say more in this video about all what all these pieces are and, and how to evaluate such a neural network. Okay. So, so maybe just as a first kind of motivation of where neural networks uh, come from or where the ideas behind the neural network come from. Uh, so, so basically one way of thinking is that, well, well, the best learner that nature has ever produced is probably the human brain, at least for, for a lot of tasks. Um, in particular, it used to be the case that humans are really good at some things that computers are not so good at. Uh, this could be recognizing images, playing games, understanding human language and so on, right? These are tasks that at least before the neural networks were really hard to, to make a computer solve uh, in, a, in a good and satisfactory manner, right? So, so basically the idea behind neural nets, so to say, is to, to say that, okay, we wanna understand how the human brain works to figure out how it learns. And then we're gonna try to use that as inspiration for designing a machine learning model, right? And this is basically where neural networks come into play. Okay, so without being a, a course on neuroscience, uh, just a very brief uh, sketch of what a neuron in the brain actually is. One can think of it basically as a as an as a tree, so it has a bunch of edges that go out, and it collects inputs from other neurons that connect to it, and it also has output edges that connect to to other neurons as inputs. And then the the basic idea is that well, there comes there's some signal that comes in on the input edges of the uh, from the other neurons. And in some sense, if enough input is, is given, then the neuron will fire a signal to the nearby uh, neurons along the output edges, right? And the second thing, particularly very important thing about neurons is that they change uh, during your lifetime, right? So they adapt and learn from your experiences. Okay, so, so maybe if we have a, a closer look, right? A really simple abstraction of what a neuron is, is doing, and this is a very simplified abstraction, is that, well, each neuron receives inputs from other neurons. Uh, the effect of each of these, there's all these edges that go into a neuron, or input lines, they're each controlled by a synaptic weight. So, so the weights here can be positive or negative, zero. And uh, the basic idea is that if enough input is given, so you kind of multiply these synaptic weights onto the signal, or you weigh this, these signals that come in by, by these synaptic weights, and if enough input is given, then the neuron is going to fire a signal along the output edges to the nearby uh, neurons that, that it connects to. And these synaptic weights are what changes throughout your lifetime, and they, they adapt uh, so that the network, your brain, can learn to perform useful computations such as recognizing object, understanding language, making plans, moving your body and so on, right? So that's the basic, very simplified abstraction of what a neuron is doing. Now, the human brain has about 10 to the 11 uh, neurons and each of them has about 10 to the four weights. Uh, so a thousand connections to nearby, uh, 10,000 connections to nearby neurons, right? So it's a huge, huge, huge network. Um, and, and all these weights that are sitting in the brain uh, they're really all changing the computation that's being performed when you receive input uh, stimuli from the surroundings. This is really a massively parallel computation that's happening inside your brain. Okay. So, so basically neural networks now is a mathematical model for machine learning. It's a, it's a machine learning model and it's in some sense inspired by what the brain is doing. Now, maybe one important thing to keep in mind is that it's not meant to be a replica of what the brain is doing. It's just meant to do well in machine learning tasks and its inspiration is just drawn from the human brain. So it's not a model of the brain. It's just a machine learning model that was inspired by the way the brain computes. Okay. So the basic building block of a neural network is the neuron, right? And this is what we've seen visualized in these previous uh, figures. It's typically drawn as just a, a, a node in a graph and it has incoming edges and it has outgoing edges. So these are the input edges, the ones that come in from the bottom. You have output edges that go out at the top 
And along each of these input edges is a signal or value that comes in. So we can, and on all the edges, there's also a weight. So just, we can call the input values x1 to x3 here when there are three inputs and the, each of them has an associated weight along these edges, w1 to w3. It also has a bias similar to, to uh, linear models, right? So there's also an, an edge where we always think of the, the input as a hard code one, and there's a weight also on that bias, like we have in the linear models. And uh, then the signal that comes in to the neuron is a linear combination of all these weights here. So the signal is really just the inner product between this vector x, uh, which we here we include the special hard-coded uh, bias of one, like we did in previous uh, videos. And it's just the inner product between x and the vector of weights w, right? So it's just w0 times one plus w1x1 plus w2x2 plus w3x3. So this should be th thought of as the, the signal that uh, comes into the, in, into the neuron in the brain. So, so right, so, so there's a vector X, uh, that's the inputs that comes in, and there's a vector W that are these weights of the neural net of the, that comes in on the, along the ingoing edges of the neuron. Okay. Now, inside this, each of these neurons, there's also what we call an activation function. So an activation function is just a mapping that maps a real number to a real number, and then you apply this activation function phi on the signal X transpose W, and this is what you send along each of the outgoing edges, you send this activation function applied to the signal. Okay, so one should think of this activation function as mimicking this idea from the brain that does the neuron fire, right? So it's somehow something that checks whether the signal is large enough, and if it is, it's going to send a large signal forward, right? So we'll get back into more precisely what such an activation function could look like. But that's the basic idea. This activation function takes care of this idea of does the neuron fire? And all these weights that are sitting along the edges would be this, the equivalent of these synaptic weights that you have in, in a neuron. And the input would be inputs from other neurons. And the outputs here would be output to other neurons in the network. Right. So, so those are the base, this is the basic building block of a neural net. Okay. So, so what could such an activation function look like? Now, one of the most popular ones, this is just the first example we'll see, we'll see more examples in some of the later videos. The, one of the most popular examples is called the RELO activation function, stands for rectified linear unit. And it's a very simple function. When you give it an input set, it just returns the maximum of zero and set. So it looks like this, right? So if you feed it an input that is less than zero, you just get zero as your result. And if you feed it something uh, that is at least zero, you just get the value back, right? So it's just a linear function for, uh, for set greater than zero, and it's a constant function for set less than or equal to zero. Okay, so it's not a it's a nonlinear function, and this is a very popular uh, activation function to use in your neural net. Okay, so so let's uh, what one can think of this as, in some sense, if you want this analogy to a neuron firing in the brain, you can think of it as uh, the Relo unit. Actually, it fires in some sense if the activation is non-negative, right? So this is really that you need some amount of signal to come into into the into the neuron in order for it to send a signal forward, otherwise it just sends zero. So, so that's the one analogy to this uh, human brain. Okay. So if we go back to this basic neuron, right, we had this phi function here that's being applied to the signal uh, in each of the neurons. And now, uh, for instance, if we choose to use the activation function RELO, we can draw it like this. Say, so, so basically what we're going to evaluate in this, this neuron is gonna be the maximum of zero and the signal, which was the inner product between W and X. Right, so this would be um, a basic neuron with a RELO activation function. Okay. And uh, so when we're training this as a machine learning model, right? The things that we change during training are going to be these weights, W0 up to W3, right? The weights on the edges. These are the ones that we can change and that we want to modify in order to make good predictions using uh, such a neural net. Okay, so let's just tr try to run through an example of evaluating uh, this one neuron and see what happens, right? So, so let's say first that we already told that we have some current weights. These are the ones that are written in red here. Uh, maybe there's a bias of two, there's a weight of four on x1, there's a weight of one on x2, and a weight of minus three on x3. And similarly, let's give it an input. Let's see what happens if we want to evaluate it on the input where x1 is two, x2 is one, x3 is four. And of course, the, the bias is hard-coded to one here. So what happens if you want to evaluate this neuron? 
So first we have to figure out what is W's inner product with X, right? So we just expand it out. So we get the first parameter of W, that's the two over here, that's multiplied by the bias one. And then we have the second weight here, four, which is multiplied by the input two. We have the third weight one here that is multiplied by the input one. And finally, we have the weight minus three that's multiplied with the weight of the input four down here. So this neuron is gonna compute the maximum of, uh, of these two terms. If we write it out, we'll see that this right hand, the, the right term inside the maximum is minus one. So this neuron is gonna output zero uh, on this input here. So it's gonna send zero along each of these outgoing edges. Okay, we could also see what happens if we change the input so that the last input of X here is a two instead. Uh, then we get two times minus three over here. Uh, if we evaluate this expression inside the max, we'll get a five. In this case, uh, the neuron is just gonna forward this value five along the outgoing edges. So this is how we can evaluate uh, one neuron inside a neural net. Okay, so, so how do we then compose multiple uh, neurons to form a neural net? So here we're gonna uh, present the, the most basic type of neural network, which is called a feed forward neural net. And even, uh, so, so what is the basic idea is that we have an input layer uh, with the bias and the inputs now here is that we have two features, uh, X1 and X2, and then we have this hard-coded bias parameter that we do here. And, and so, so what happens here is that uh, along, I guess for each of the, the neurons in the middle layer here, they have an edge coming in from each of the input uh, neurons and it has a weight on each of these edges. So for instance, the first one here, uh, so we can, uh, it's, it's a vector of weights, let's call it W1, and it has three weights, right? It has the weight corresponding to the bias, W1, zero, has a weight corresponding to X1, it's W1, one, and has a weight corresponding to X2 here, W1, two. So all these uh, weights are sitting on these incoming edges. We call this middle layer here, uh, which is, we call it uh, the hidden layer, because it's basically, it's not the input layer and it's not the output layer. And, and then we just call it the hidden layer, a, a hidden layer. Any layer that's not the input layer or the output layer is a hidden layer. Now, similarly, right, we have the second neuron here. It also has an edge coming in from each of the inputs and the bias. And it also has a weight on each of them. So we can maybe write this one as W2. It has a weight W20, W21, W22. One for each of the inputs coming into the neuron. Finally, right, there's also the output layer uh, where we again have a, um, a neuron that has an edge coming in from each of the neurons in the previous layer. And we can maybe call this vector of weights W3. So it has a W3 zero, that's the weight multiplied onto a bias. So we always have a bias in each of the layers. Uh, we have a W3 one, that's the weight onto the neuron one in the, in the middle layer. And a W3 uh, two, that's the weight onto the second neuron in the middle layer. Okay, so these are all the parameters of such a small depth uh, feed forward neural network. So, so for instance, one instantiation could be these weights that are shown here. So maybe there's a weight of three in this bias, a weight of minus one here, minus one here, five, minus three, two, and one, one, minus one, right? Those could be uh, valid weights on all of these edges in the, in the network. So let's just try to run through an evaluation of this neural net with these current weights. So let's say we give it as an input uh, a feature vector X that has the first feature is three, the second feature is two, and then we have the hard-coded bias that is one. So these are the inputs to all these neurons. Then we can just kind of go forward in the network. This is the feed forward uh, part of a, a feed forward neural net. So we just go forward through the layers and look at the, and the neurons one at a time and figure out what it evaluates to. So this one here, right, is gonna uh, compute this linear combination. So it has the weight five times onto the bias, the weight minus three times onto the three down here and the weight two multiplied onto the input here that's two. And we have to take the max of that and zero. Well, we have a minus nine plus five plus four. So this is just going to get to zero. So this neuron here is going to evaluate to zero. We could go to the second neuron here as a weight of one. I'm oh, sorry, a weight of, yes, yeah, a weight of one on this edge that comes from the bias. So that's one times one. It has a weight of one on the edge that goes to the input with weight, uh, the input three. So we have one times three and it has a weight of minus one on the input with a two. If we evaluate all of this, this uh, maximum expression gives a two. So this neuron evaluates to two. Now, once we've evaluated the middle layer here, we can also evaluate the, the final layer, the output layer. And uh, what we see here is that 
uh, this neuron here, it has a weight of three on the bias. So that's three times one. It has a weight of minus one on the zero output here. So this is a minus one times zero. And it has a weight of minus one on this neuron here. So it's minus one times the output here, that is two. If you evaluate all of this, we get a four uh, minus a two. Uh, and now I, I don't know how to compute numbers here. So four minus two is uh, is clearly not one. Oh, sorry. I just can't multiply. Three times one is three. Uh, minus two, that gives a one. So, sorry, my mistake. This is, of course, correct. Three times one is three, minus zero, minus two, that gives a one. So the output of this neuron is going to be one. Okay, so the whole evaluation of this neural net evaluates to one, and this is the, the output of the, of the neural net, the, the prediction made by the neural net. Okay, so, so feed-forward neural networks are really uh, networks where all the edges in the network point forward, so upwards in, the, in, in these... Uh, layers uh, and formally these this means that the the graph the computation uh, of this neural net is an acyclic directed graph so everything points in in one direction so there are no cycles uh, there does exist other types of uh, neural network architectures where they're actually bag edges we won't really be, be talking about these here but these are current recurrent neural networks so there are also versions where, where this can happen uh, and they're more complicated and they won't be covered in in these videos here so so this is like the the first intro to, to neural networks. Okay, so in we'll next, next videos, we'll look more at all the details of these, both these activation functions and how you can train them and, and so on.